Hey guys, how's it going? So are any of you making your own private firearms? I'm sure a lot of you are, and that's a good thing. But keep in mind, if you are, you may be getting looked into by the ATF, or the ATF may be using the fact that you're making your own firearms as criteria that could deem you as being a violent extremist, a criminal, or possibly even a terrorist. And this comes to us today from the Second Amendment Foundation. They put out an email, and I'm going to share the leaked document with you guys right now. And I'm just going to give you my opinion on it. Keep in mind, I'm not a lawyer. These are just my opinions, except for when I cite some of the founding documents in a minute. Those are not opinions. Those actually do say what they say, and they mean what they mean, especially right now, and they always will. So we're going to go over here. And I'm going to leave links to this down in the description. This is a document, again, leaked. This was supposed to stay internally within the ATF. And this comes from the Joint Counterterrorism Assessment Team. Yeah, see where this is heading? So this is a six-page document. I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to go over a few key parts and tell you what, in my opinion, they're actually talking about here. Now, this is for the first responder awareness of privately made firearms may prevent illicit activities. So they're going after privately made firearms, which we'll see in this document can mean anything from 3D printing, parts kits, just taking billets of metal, machining them, using many commonly available tools, 3D printers, all these types of things. I think you guys know what they are by now. They're certainly going after them in more ways than one. So it starts off right out of the rip here. It says criminals and violent extremists continue to seek ways to acquire firearms through the production of privately made firearms, PMFs. PMFs can, easily, can be easily made using readily available instructions and commonly available tools, require no background check or firearms registration, serial number under federal law, and their parts have become more accessible and affordable. So this is for the actual first responders. You could call these door kickers. Law enforcement, the ATF, that's who they want to read this. Now, they're not saying right off the rip that no matter what, if somebody's building their own firearm, that they're guaranteed to be an extremist, terrorist, or criminal. But these are things that they could factor in because they're saying a lot of criminals, extremists, are making their own personal firearms. And if I were to opine... It'd be something like this, possibly. <clears throat> Somebody makes a social media post saying, the South will rise again. Whatever. I mean, they're considering much of the First Amendment to be hate speech, extremists, all these things. And the First Amendment is obviously under attack in America right now, too. They could couple that with, okay, and they've been buying a lot of guns. And by the way, they've been buying 3D printing filament. And we'll see a bunch of criteria down here later. Parts, kits things like that and then that might start giving them a picture when you start combining these things together that this person could be an extremist violent illicit activities all these really scary words now probably in my opinion to prevent maybe another ruby ridge they do put a note here and it says no many of the activities described herein may involve constitutionally protected activities and may be insignificant on their own Action should not be taken solely based on the exercise of constitutionally protected rights. And they are correct, actually, the way they word that. See, these are constitutionally protected rights. July 4th, 1776, one of the most beautiful things ever written, the Declaration of Independence. It says that we are all endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, in 1791... They wrote the Bill of Rights and enacted that into the Constitution. You know, that's the law of the land in this country. Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. See, that didn't give us our right because as the Declaration says, these are laws of nature, of nature's God, and your rights are endowed to you by your Creator. Whoever you believe created you or whatever it would be, right? And the Second Amendment is just a prohibition on government from infringing upon those natural rights. So can you build a firearm on your own? Well, yeah, that's protected under the Second Amendment, right? People have been building firearms before the United States of America was a country, at the inception thereof, 
and still are today, but it's becoming under increased scrutiny every day. And there's currently rules being proposed by the ATF regarding these types of things right now. So this is very relevant. And at the time of me doing this, only 88 people, it appears, have viewed this document. I'm looking at it on my screen there. So I thought I should bring it to your attention. So they're starting off drawings showing, look, the procurement of receivers highlighted in red. So they're educating these field agents. This is a receiver. First responders, they call them, right? So there's a picture of a receiver right there. They're talking about past cases where in West Virginia, a man pled guilty to one count of possession of an unregistered firearm and that he was also manufacturing and transferring hundreds of machine gun conversion devices. They're going to cite a couple examples to let them know that this is a big problem, even though when you actually look at their numbers here, it's really not that many. So they're going to start saying like, these are PMF, personally made firearms, related observable indicators. So they're educating these first responders on what it's going to kind of look like. And it says assistance on making undetectable firearms. So if somebody's in social media talking about that, they could couple that with, see, this is one of these things where they're just trying to establish patterns for people and classify people into certain groups, groups such as violent extremists and terrorists that's what the document says discussion on ways to avoid detection at security checkpoints while carrying a firearm as well as making low to non-metallic content firearms again these are discussions things people are asking about just keep that in mind queries by known violent extremists seeking people with experience with computer assisted design or 3d printing I've heard them say, if you voted for Trump, you're an extremist. That's what I've heard people from the government say. So these words like extremist can mean many, many things. And I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that. Do you? Inquiries on ways to sell or purchase a finished holy plastic 3D firearm. The presence of 3D printers or materials during calls to service, warrant executions, or other encounters related to suspected firearms. Reports from federal firearm licensees identifying people suspected of manufacturing PMFs or converting them from semi-auto to full auto. That was outlawed. 1934 was the restriction. The Hughes Amendment of 86 closed up the ability to make a machine gun. Acquisition of other commercial firearm-related items that are known PMFs. Abnormally large number of orders from internet firearm suppliers to a single address in states with more regulations. I frequently make large orders of things from firearms websites, which is totally legal. They're going on to say that they're having trouble because of a bunch of unsuccessful traces. They're having a hard time tracing these firearms. And in my opinion, that's why many completely law-abiding people are making these, right? Law-abiding and not law-abiding. But hey, look, the Second Amendment is a right. And you have the right to keep and bear arms. And it says, shall not be infringed. So we're going to go on here. You guys should definitely come back and read this. I just don't want the video to last for an hour. But here's what's interesting. They're really educating these first responders. So they're saying things like, this is, this is things they're literally educating them on. Become familiar with methods and technologies used by illicit actors to transport PMFs. Now they just got done earlier saying if you're asking questions on the internet or talking about these things. That could be things that they're all factoring in. They just want to pile up enough to where they can get a case or a suspect or however they word it internally. Consider investigating calls to service resulting in the encounter of PMF manufacturing. This can be a secondary result of an investigation. So they could be there for another reason. They see a 3D printer. They're supposed to keep looking. In my opinion, that's how this reads. It says, do not disregard an item that appears to be plastic or toy firearm. So... Hopefully your kids don't have a lot of Nerf guns because that's not to be disregarded, according to this internal memo. Become familiar with common tools that can be used to manufacture PMFs, including, but not limited to, computer num numeric control machine mills, drill tools, files, flat pieces, a fused deposition modeling printers, hydraulic presses, item used to bend metal, and stereo lithography printers. Man, I have a press in the back shop over there that I use to press out, like, you know, U-joints when I'm changing a universal joint on a drive shaft. That's not to be disregarded. Let's go on a little further. 
And this is something where they're really actually getting into the nitty gritty. And unless you're a firearms geek, maybe some of you watching right now aren't even familiar with some of this stuff. Other commonly used terms, and they're showing pictures right here. Unfinished polymer pistol frame. Unfinished AR type receiver. A partially completed frame or receiver made by forgings, castings, extruding, molding, or machining that while completed to the point it can be recognized as a receiver blank has not yet reached a stage of manufacture that can be classified as a serial number. Now, they're looking to change a lot of this soon with proposed ATF regulation, but they explain those. Now, here's where it gets a little more convoluted. Flat. They have a MAC-type flat and an AK-type receiver flat. A stamped or cut receiver body formed from sheet metal, usually steel or aluminum, that usually must be bent into its final shape. So they're showing flats and how to recognize those now. Then it goes on a counterfeit firearm. It shows an original Colt and then a counterfeit Colt. So people who have been maybe trying to dress up their homemade firearm to look like a Colt, these are all things that they're looking for here. Again, guys, it's just you're adding up all this stuff. And if you're like me, you're starting to say, well, hold on a minute. One plus one starts equaling two. Two plus two equals four. Four plus four most certainly means eight. And it's not saying, and I'm not trying to lead you to believe this either, that, that they're just going to come in and say, you're making your own firearm. You're automatically an extremist or terrorist. But they are saying many extremists do make their own firearms, according to this criminals extremists all these very scary words that you don't think about when you're just pursuing life liberty and the pursuit of happiness right and you're just exercising the constitutionally protected right to keep and bear arms no this is for first responders so if they see something maybe not immediately go for the dog or or, or necessarily arrest you but hold on a minute i see some 3d filament over there I see some sheet metal over there. I see some guns that appear to be toy guns over there. According to the way I read this memo, this is all adding up as different possible indicators. And while they are acknowledging that the Second Amendment protects people's rights to keep and bear arms, it sure seems like they're going through here as hard as they can trying to find different again constitutionally protected methods of making your own firearms and they're adding at the very least extra scrutiny to these if not possibly using these to build cases on people in my opinion of course so again this was broke by the second amendment foundation this is an internal memo it says right here official use only not for public release so this isn't just something they're putting out there for a scare tactic this is an actual document they were distributing to first responders people that could come to your home place of business to investigate crimes whether it's related to this or other things and that's what they're using to educate them on and telling them what to look for so no this wasn't supposed to be something read by you and i but here it is and i think you should all read it and understand it again i don't quite understand every last word of it but i'm just again one plus one equals two two plus two equals four right and I think it's a shame that they're immediately saying that the Joint Counterterrorism Assessment Team, if you see a 3D printer, if you see filament, if somebody was asking something online, keep in mind that's a big part of this. Things you ask people online, maybe text messaging, maybe on the phone, all these types of things that you might want to talk about. I'm going to assume you're just asking about it for completely educational purposes or so you can exercise the right to keep and bear arms, but they're going to use that combined with all these other things to maybe paint a picture of you and maybe call you an extremist, maybe a terrorist, maybe a criminal. All right, guys, let me know what you think of this down in the comment. Yeah, just another thing. And they're never going to stop. That's why we can never stop being vigilant and keeping on fighting for our these are laws of nature, of nature's God, that are protected by the Bill of Rights and the Second Amendment and the First Amendment. <clears throat> and we do have a republic, as Ben Franklin said, if you can keep it. All right, with that, guys, again, let me know what you think. All right, thanks for watching, and have a good one.